So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joan Vitello hyphen Sishu, and I am honored and thrilled to be serving as the fifth dean of the newly named Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing here at UMass Chan Medical School. It is my privilege and pleasure to be your hostess this evening. This is our first time together in person for our award ceremony since 2019, far too long. I am overjoyed to be here with all of you. A special welcome to our graduating 2022 nursing students, as you will soon become our newest alumni. We are celebrating each of you for your commitment and sacrifice you have made to being Learn is here in the GSN, especially during these unprecedented, turbulent times. Welcome to our honored award and scholarship recipients, our invited guests, and our interdisciplinary and interprofessional colleagues. I want to give special thanks to members of our Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing community who are here tonight. First of all, I'm grateful to see so many of our faculty and staff, and I would like them to stand so we can applaud them because it, without you, we would have no learners graduating this year. So please, faculty, stand. <laughs> They're truly the backbone of our school. I also want to extend my heartfelt thanks to people who have worked with me on the planning for this event tonight. First of all, Sue Collette. Where's Sue? I think she's out there handing out the white coats. Danielle Blow, my executive assistant, is out there as well. So, Ann Reardon, I think she's out there as well, Ann Reardon. And then none other than Dr. Jill Terrian, who's been by my side for the last six years. <laughs> now I would also like to welcome our Chancellor, Chancellor Collins, to say a few words and give out his Chancellor's Award. Thank you, Dean, very much. Good afternoon, everyone. It's, um, it's always a very exciting week, commencement week. I'm delighted to have the opportunity just to say a few words. Um, I was one minute and 29 seconds late, and the dean so informed me. <laughs> she didn't say it with words, it was with the look. We can begin now. <laughs> dean, I want to thank you for your leadership, particularly during these last couple years, and um, we've had many health challenges. You've had your own challenges at home. We all miss Jerry, but we thank you very much for your leadership. Would you please join me in thanking our great team? Thank you. Uh, to the faculty and staff of uh, our nursing school, thank you very much for all you do to help our graduates to succeed in, in all that they do. Um, it's a great privilege to have the opportunity to represent you across the world, and, um, and I, I thank you for the stewardship of our graduates' um, education and for all you do to make the school so strong. Um, uh, I have the opportunity each year to uh, speak during uh, commencement week um, at each one of these ceremonies, but my real speech of the week is on Sunday. And so I don't plan to give it tonight, I plan to give it on Sunday. So you can relax. <laughs> um, but I am, uh, I can give you three words. And you can then think about what I'm gonna say, but on Sunday I plan to make the case that we need you. If you wanna hear the rest of the story, you'll have to come on Sunday. Or <laughs> watch it online later in the day, but um, i given a lot of thought to, uh, I was given a lot of thought, you know, four or 5,000 people in that tent, and 
chance for me to deliver a message. And I really do think that you think of, you consider all the things that are going on in the world at the moment. Uh, when it comes to nurses and scientists and physicians, God knows at this time we need you. And um, I'll make the case, hopefully on Sunday. Um, it's now my distinct pleasure to present the 2022 Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing Chancellor's Award. This is the highest award uh, bestowed upon a member of the uh, graduating class. I'm pleased to present this year's Chancellor's Award to Rachel Nemec. Rachel, we see you loud and clear. <laughs> Good afternoon. If I might just say a few words um, about Rachel. So Rachel is graduating with a Doctor of Nursing Practice um, degree in our Nurse Family Practitioner Program on Sunday. Rachel has an outstanding worth ethic that propelled her to the top of the graduating class. But it's really her efforts outside the classroom as a tireless advocate for victims of sexual exploitation and trafficking that's most impressive and speaks to her values construct. As a pediatric sexual assault nurse practitioner, Rachel responds to emergency circumstances where sexual abuse, sexual abuse has been disclosed. In that noble role, she's often the first healthcare professional with whom victims interact. And I can tell you that it requires extraordinary care and supreme sensitivity. Rachel's ability to handle this responsibility and the dedication she's shown to the victims she so ably serves are outstanding attributes and well known by her colleagues. Rachel's work in this area has led her to take on combating child sexual exploitation at a systemic level. She's on a team focused on identifying commercial sexual exploitation and educating community health care providers on assessing the signs of sexual exploitation and abuse. Further, she serves on the boards of nonprofit organizations providing trauma-informed care for human trafficking and child abuse survivors. Rachel, you're such an inspiring member of our community and exemplify the altruism, compassion, service, and leadership espoused by our UMass Chan student body, and in this instance, by the student body of the Tan Chink Fen Graduate School of Nursing. In three words, Rachel, we need you. I'm really happy to say that Rachel is going to be staying with us after graduation as a member of the Family Nurse Practitioner Program as a coordinator of that program. It's a privilege to present to Rachel the 2022 Chan Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing Chancellor's Award, and perhaps we'll do that with a little shake on Sunday. How's that? Congratulations. There it is. If you want to see it, there it is. <laughs> I look forward to seeing all of you, your family, uh, friends, loved ones on Sunday afternoon. It's, a, uh, it's really a, a wonderful ceremony. It's a very uplifting few hours, and it'll, be, uh, it'll represent moments that you'll remember forever. And I look forward to greeting you um, on Sunday afternoon and making the case that we need you. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Chancellor. Now it's my privilege and pleasure to introduce Dr. Terence Flott, who is our provost and the dean of the School of Medicine. Thank you. Well, let me just briefly add my congratulations uh, to all of you, to Rachel, and to all the award winners that we'll hear about, and to all the graduates of the class of 2022 of the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing. 
I also, uh, just at the beginning here, want to uh, give a special uh, congratulations um, to the uh, Donna and Robert Manning Endowed Chair of Nursing, uh, our Dean, uh, Dean Joan Vitello. So congratulations to you. It is indeed a milestone for our Graduate School of Nursing to have an endowed uh, chair for our dean. And it is also uh, a, uh, a great blessing to us here at this institution that we have a dean worthy of that honor. So thank you for all of your service to this school. Um, I just want to say that uh, speaking of another donation, the sentiment that was expressed by Gerald Chan and his family in naming this school after their own mother, uh, Tan Ching Feng, uh, demonstrates high, how highly they value the profession of nursing. Uh, Dr. Chan, in one of his earliest speeches, called the, this the science of caring. Uh, he called nursing the science of caring. And as a graduate-only school of nursing, the Tan Ching Fen School is deeply engaged in the science side of caring, delving deeply into nursing research and advanced practice. You are the current and future leaders of this profession, a profession that has proven indispensable to all of us throughout the world. As we continue to wrestle with the immense global, local, national challenges to human health, the new phases of COVID-19 as it passes from pandemic to endemic, the ongoing crises in, in mental health, substance use disorders, obesity and health disparities, just to name a few. So let, let us just take this opportunity to thank you uh, for stepping in to face these challenges, uh, whether it be at the level of nursing science or one patient at a time. Uh, let me also say that you're completing your degrees as advanced practice nurses and nurse scientists gives me personally tremendous hope that we can face these and, and even overcome these challenges. You've completed this phase of your professional journey in concert with your faculty and your dean in a manner of which we are all intensely proud. So again, please accept my heartfelt congratulations and let me now introduce back to you uh, your dean uh, and the Donna and Robert Manning Chair, uh, Dr. Uh, Joan Vitello. Joan. Well, the chancellor gets to give the chancellor's award and I get to give the dean's award. So. The Dean's Award is to recognize a graduating doctoral student for their outstanding work on their, either their dissertation or DNP scholarly project. So this year, it is my honor to recognize Dr. Amanda Corning as this year's Dean's Award. Dr. Corning, would you come up? She didn't know she was getting this, so this makes it even more special for me. So let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Corning. Um, she's been an exemplary student and scholar to work with us for the past four years here at the Tian Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing. Amanda, from the moment she entered the PhD program, has embraced learning, scholarship, generosity, scientific integrity with the goal of stu stewarding the discipline of nursing. Her dissertation entitled Facilitators and Inhibitors of LPN to RN Student Transition, colon, a national survey study exemplifies her commitment to ensuring we explore best ways to embrace and support diverse and valued learners at all levels of our discipline. Dr. Corning recognizes the disparities in how we don't always meet LPNs where, there are, where they're at, at their learning trajectory, as we have with our G, uh, graduate entry pathway learners. Thus, her survey holds great potential to create supportive interventions for LPNs transitioning into the RN role to be better navigate 
their student experiences. Amanda has been a joy to work with, proactive in her plan of study, self-reflective, a critical thinker, taking advantage of conferences and publications, dissemination opportunities emerging from her coursework, and always respectful of varying thoughts and ideas from faculty and classmates. Most importantly, she exquisitely role models how to balance scholarship, work as a nurse educator, while always prioritizing the needs of Ginny and Sammy, her best work to date. Children. Amanda is a consummate scholar, clinician, and nurse educator. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Amanda Kline. I know. There's an envelope on the back. And you want to face the. the he wants it. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, the next um, recognition is a commencement speaker, and actually, Jen um, De Benedetto. Jen, come on up here for a minute. I want to introduce you. Jen was in my office today um, doing a dry run because we tried to keep our uh, commencement speech down to three to five minutes. She made it right under the wire. She's at four minutes. Um, so let me introduce um, Dr. Jennifer DiBenedetto as the 2022 Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing student speaker. Throughout her coursework in the PhD program, Jen has demonstrated visionary thinking and extraordinary insight into the nurse-patient relationship. In addition to her background as a critical care nurse, Jen has earned designation as a Reiki master. Dr. DiBenedetto has shown exceptional commitment to her goal of advancing research on Reiki. After having successfully defended a dissertation proposal to study Reiki with family members of ICU patients, Jen had to change her study due to COVID um, with visitor restrictions. So with her typical can-do positive attitude, Jen wrote a new proposal and efficiently recruited participants for a novel online Reiki study, which demonstrated statistically significant results. Jen has also contributed to global health volunteer work, both in Haiti and with the UMass Chan team in the Dominican Republic. Dr. DiBenedetto is currently an assistant professor at Regis College and has recently been awarded a postdoctoral research fellowship at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, Dartmouth College. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Jen DiBenedetto. The next scholarship is, do is Dr. Carol Bova's scholarship, and this scholarship is named for the service and dedication of Dr. Carol Bova, who I hope is on um, seeing us virtually, and recognizes a PhD student who demonstrates an unwavering commitment to patient care, nursing leadership, and again, the desire to steward the discipline of nursing into the future. The student selected for the 2022 Carol Bova Award is Sandra Tofe. Sandra, are you here? No? Okay, well I want to tell you a little bit about Sandra even though she's not here to accept this. Sandra is a student in the PhD program where she is highly regarded by students and faculty alike. Sandra works as a nurse practitioner in the hospitalist role at Morton Hospital. Sandra is very committed to community service. She has volunteered as a court-appointed special advocate for children and currently volunteers as the treasurer for the Women's Association at the Methodist Church in Worcester, Massachusetts. While at the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing, Sandra has distinguished herself as an emerging scholar working steadfastly 
toward her goal of advancing health for African immigrants. Sandra's dissertation research will be conducting a study on self-care practices of African immigrants with hypertension. She truly exemplifies the characteristics of the Carol Bover Award through her unwavering commitment toward patient care and stewardship of the discipline of nursing. Please join me in congratulating Sandra Tofe. The next award is the Lillian Goodman Award, and this is given, um, Lillian Goodman was the second dean of the Tan, well, it wasn't the Tanjing Graduate School of Nursing, it was just the Graduate School of Nursing when she was the second dean. But this award recognizes an outstanding PhD student who exemplifies a humanitarian approach to leadership, scholarship, and deep commitment to the development of professional practice, education, and research. The recipient for the Lillian R. Goodman Award is Heather Kennedy. Heather, are you here? Oh, Heather, come on down. Let me tell you a little bit about Heather. Heather is starting her third year. You can come near me, honestly. <laughs> is starting her third year of PhD studies. She exudes the intent of this award. She is guided in her work as a scholar and a professional nurse from a humanitarian framework that she consistently applies to her leadership, scholarship, and her deep commitment to the development of professional nursing practice, education, and research. Heather is a nurse's nurse. She has worked for many years as a clinical nurse specialist with families who have children with special health care needs, ensuring that they receive the precise and careful education and preparation to manage the care beyond the hospital setting. She is a warrior in her commitment to provide safe family child discharge from hospitals and fights against the checklist mentality that too often has seeped into the continuity of care process. We have no doubt her dissertation will inform future transitional care for families while laying the groundwork for Heather's future and productive program of research. Please join me in congratulating Heather Kennedy. The Annie Vigent Award has two recipients. This award was created by the Worcester City Hospital School of Nursing, who trained nurses for 109 years to provide care for the Worcester community. This award recognizes overall excellence in nursing. So we have two awardees. The first one is Nancy Figueroa. Nancy, come on up. And then the second awardee, I'm going to have her come up too, and I'm going to talk about both of them, is Kathleen Cudahy. <laughs> Kathleen. Don't see Kathleen. All right, well, Nancy, I'm going to talk about both of you. <laughs> I'll start with you first. So Nancy exemplifies the essence of the Annie Vigent Award, someone who values the connection with patient, family, and community to ensure their goals and vision of health care is represented in forefront in their care. She is someone who understands the complexity of the health care system and supports the navigation through the barriers so the patient receives the best care for optimal health. She loves practicing in community health. Her preceptor, Karen Luzuski, shared, she is never judgmental. Instead, Nancy meets patients where they are at, sees the best in everyone, and is passionate about issues of access, equity, and patient rights. Please join me in congratulating Nancy Figueroa.
So Kathleen distinguishes herself in her graduate studies as a nurse passionate about the care of patients with serious illness and in need of palliative care services and support. She helped design and lead a DNP scholarly project evaluating the impact of the use of telehealth for patients and families at a local hospice during the COVID pandemic and is planning to publish this very important work. She has recently accepted a position at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York, where she will be doing a palliative care residency. Please join me in congratulating <laughs> Kathleen Cudahy. Is Paulette Seymour out here? I was going to have her come up. Is she here? No? OK. Uh, well, this award goes to the fourth GSN Dean, um, Dean Emeritus Paulette Seymour Rout. It is given to an alumnus like Paulette who is returning to further their education in pursuit of a PhD, DMP, a postgraduate certificate. I understand Lindsay McGregor, who is getting this award, cannot join us tonight, but I do again want to say a little something about. Lindsay McGregor. So let's first of all congratulate her. So Lindsay is being recognized for her outstanding academic, leadership, and scholarship achievements as a student in the post-master's DMP program. She is an alumnus of our master's NP program, now enrolled to obtain her clinical practice doctorate degree. Lindsay exemplifies qualities of a true leader in advanced practice. She is highly dedicated to her professional role, emphasizing the need for holistic quality of patient care for persons and families faced with pancreatic cancer is a very serious illness. Her DMP scholarly project focuses on standardizing distress screening and newly diagnosed pancreatic malignancy at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, where she practices as a nurse practitioner. She has exhibited exceptional qualities throughout the program with her inquisitive, committed, influential, and caring nature for enhancing clinical practice. Please join me in congratulating Lindsay McGregor. The next award is the Susan T. and John L. Sullivan Scholarship. We have two recipients for this award. This award is established in memory of a UMass alumni and instructor, Susan T. Sullivan, by her family, and also recognizes her son, John, who passed away suddenly in September 2019. This award distinguishes students with a commitment to geriatrics, end-of-life care, and interprofessional team care. The first awardee is Grace Winship. Grace, see you here. And I'll bring up the second awardee, and that is Samantha Kremer. So let me start with Grace first. Grace entered the um, Family Nurse Practitioner Program not only ready to learn new skills, but with a willingness to let the academic journey transform, transform her clinically and personally. While she engages skillfully with the didactics at hand, her questions, reflections, and contributions highlight her deeper commitment to the path of becoming an outstanding caretaker and reflect the deep soul of our profession. Congratulations, Grace. And then Samantha is a compassionate and dedicated professional who has demonstrated a keen interest and aptitude for palliative care. She has dedicated time to this passion by taking a focused elective course on this topic and then spending a portion of her clinical time with the palliative care service. She understands the needs of the patients and families under her care. She is a compassionate and skilled advanced practice nurse. Samantha is the ideal recipient for this award. Please join me in congratulating Samantha Kramer. 
got to grab the envelope. They must have run out of tape. Is Mary Kay Alexander here? Okay, I'm going to give out her award. Um, this is the Mary Kay Alexander Academic Achievement and Leadership Award. This recognizes an outstanding nurse practitioner graduate in the adult gerontology primary care track who has demonstrated academic achievement and leadership. Emily Davenport Alonzo, you are the recipient of this. Emily has been an outstanding, high-achieving student since she came to the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing. She is professional, compassionate, thoughtful, and an excellent critical thinker. She exudes excellence and is accountable and highly regarded by the GSN faculty and her peers. Her most recent achievement is tonight's white coat ceremony, which she brought to fruition as part of her leadership practicum, which was a team effort. Congratulations, Emily, for this recognition and well-deserved honor. Uh, Janet Hill, where are you? You can come up and join me. I know. <laughs> so this award is named after Janet Frazier Hill, and it's called the Janet Frazier Hill Academic Achievement and Leadership Award. Why don't you read the recipient for us? All right. I'd be happy to. Just need some glasses. So I'm very excited to invite Ashling Ryan to the podium. Ashling embraces all she does. Oops, I could take this off. She embraces all she does with enthusiasm and positivity that is engaging and inspirational. Ashling is a genuine leader who motivates and influences others through her passion, exemplary practice, and professionalism. She has fiercely cared for her patients through the current pandemic and has done so with strength and dedication. In the words of Andy Lowe, Chief Strategy Officer, Outer Cape Health Services Director, Cape and Islands uh, AHEC, I have observed Ashling where she clearly provided leadership among peers. Ashling has coordinated many of the activities and taken the lead with communications with the Outer Cape Health Service Navigator team. Ashling has kept the project going and she's been actively recruiting GSN students to sustain this um, in following her graduation. It's also my honor to say that she is one of the first of our graduates who has worked with one of the School of Medicine medical students, and they did the project together, um, each of them presenting different components of it. So they've been quite a wonderful team, and I was honored to have both of them as students in different courses. So, um, Ashling just completed a community leadership practicum in which she took on the role as the assistant AHEC director. Ashling handled this role with self-assurance, grace, and aplomb. Ashling is destined not only to be an outstanding clinician, but a future leader in healthcare. I can't imagine a more deserving student for this leadership award, and this is what we think as well. She is well deserving of the Janet Hale Academic and Leadership <laughs> Award. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> okay, next comes our briefcase awards, and I'd like to invite Dr. Susan Feeney to come up to hand out the briefcase awards. 
Um, the Lucille, Lucy D. Russell Briefcase Awards are recognizing students who display a fierce determination to achieve their personal and professional goals in becoming a nurse practitioner. So the first one is in our family nurse practitioner track, and the awardee goes to Candace Wallace. Candace. <laughs> Candace Wallace is a dedicated and hardworking student who demonstrates fierce perseverance in her coursework and her clinical education, which is the underlying foundation for her success in her studies. Candace's determined focus on her goals, her compassion, and her high level of expectation is the foundation of her success. When confronted with a challenge, Candace has faced it head on and was not afraid to ask how best to achieve and manages to exceed expectations. There is no doubt that Candace will be an exemplary family nurse practitioner. Please join me in congratulating Candace. All right. So the second um, briefcase awardee um, is in the adult gerontology primary care nurse practitioner tract, and this is going to Fumangli Mimi Opravan. <laughs> so with the gentle calmness Mimi leads by example, learns by listening, uses constructive criticism as an opportunity to grow, and demonstrates confidence in others by trusting them to contribute their work and ideas to the task at hand. Amidst the uncertainty of a global pandemic, Mimi has successfully navigated the demands and chaos of graduate studies, work, and a growing family to emerge as a gentle leader. It was a pleasure that we award this briefcase award to Mimi Opravan. Congratulations. The next track is the Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner, and this is going to Daniela Carrasco. <laughs> Daniela is an exceptional student. She's persevered and excelled throughout the clinical year to become the phenomenal acute care nurse practitioner she is now. Daniela faced all ch challenges with determination and grit, and her perseverance has been the source of her success. She now focuses her clinical time with the hematology oncology population, where her compassion and dedication will serve her patients, their families, and the community so well. This is such a well-deserved recognition. Please join me in congratulating Daniela Carrasco. <laughs> And then in our psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, um, I understand this awardee cannot make it also this evening, but this goes to Masha Charlton. Please join me in congratulating Masha. <laughs> Masha is a strong, self-directed learner who brings with her a palpable degree of curiosity about the world. Masha demonstrates a deep commitment to her work as a nurse practitioner and her empath 
empathetic range for peers and patients is vast. She is a deeply reflective learner and practitioner and has enriched the classroom experience by offering meaningful perspectives and personal sharing. Please join me in congratulating Masha. The next awardee award is for an outstanding nurse, pra nurse practitioner student in critical care. And this is to recognize the student dedicated to and demonstrating excellence in critical care throughout their nurse practitioner year. I'm going to ask Alex Minard to come up with me. And um, the recipient is Caitlin Cormier. Is Caitlin here? Caitlin is the ideal student. She was admired by her preceptors in critical care for her high level of professionalism and constant drive to gain knowledge and experience during her nurse practitioner clinical rotations. Her evaluations by her faculty and preceptors throughout her practicums were outstanding, and she will truly make a difference for the patients that are under her care. Please join me in congratulating Caitlin. Okay, the next award is the Jane McHugh Magner Award, and this is to recognize the student that exemplifies dedication to professional practice in the care of an underserved patient. Um, and I understand this student cannot also make it this evening. It's Irina Rojas. Irina, congratulations. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Irina. Irina's personal desire to become a nurse practitioner and serve populations in areas of greatest need stems back to her childhood. As a 10-year-old little girl who had survived Hurricane Katrina, having been trapped at the charity hospital for a week, she felt inspired and motivated by the nurses and first responders. It is this story, alongside other diverse experiences and opportunities, that informed Irina's choice of study and will continue to inform her work as a family nurse practitioner. As part of our campus community, Irina has served as one of five graduate School of Nursing student representatives elected by her peers on the Tri-School Wellness Committee. In an effort to improve healthcare access, Irina's doctoral project consists of implementing and evaluating a method of care and is entitled Virtual Group Peer Support for Persons with High-Risk Pregnancy to Improve Maternal Mental Health Outcomes, which was supported by the Massachusetts Postpartum Depression Fund in the March of Dimes. Please join me in congratulating Irina Rojas for this award. So it's always um, really important for us to recognize our interprofessional colleagues out in the community. And this evening is with no exception that we will now um, tell you a little bit about this Interprofessional Community Service Award. We want to acknowledge exemplary work with the community and demonstrate seamless interprofessional teamwork to improve population-based outcomes. The recipient of this Community Service Award is the Worcester Free Care Collaborative. So I'm going to ask you all to come up if you're in the audience. Angela Patterson, Cassandra Gale, Courtney Mantla, Jacob Waldman, Emily Dillon, Morgan Hill, Rachel Odelia, Joshan Narola, Jillian Stiacy, and David Runyon.
The members of this group came together under the 603B Population and Community Health Practicum. Some members had an affiliation with the clinics that the Worcester Free Care Collaborative is involved with, and others joined due to the interprofessional opportunities to work with the underserved. In particular, they have worked to integrate the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing and our students in the Epworth Free Clinic offering pediatric vaccinations in the, and at the Aquaba Clinic where they are working to incorporate patient education materials. There is much more to say. However, this team has worked with medical students, physicians, and volunteers to assure GSN students have the opportunity to participate and lead initiatives. We are so proud of your work and look forward to the future. Congratulations to all of you. Okay, this goes, uh, this next award is called the GSN Community Partnership Award, and there are two recipients for this award. This is an award that recognizes ongoing partnerships with the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing and providing opportunities that allow students and faculty to learn in the community and benefit from population health experiences. The first recipient is the Clinical Decision Unit um, and I would also um, ask the following people. Maria Cote, Kimberly Murchie, Jacqueline Barubert, Nolan Ferguson, Jane Marciara, and Stephanie DiTomaso, whoever's here to please come down. Um, The advanced practice providers of this clinical decision unit have been an incredible friend of the Tan Ching Graduate School of Nursing, always willing to precept us students and providing the highest quality of clinical experiences. We graciously offer this plaque to signify our heartfelt thanks. You have been so gracious and helpful with all of our students, and we really want to extend our heartfelt thanks. Thank you. The next partnership award goes to the Edward M. Kennedy Center, and I'm going to ask Abigail Matthews, if you're here, to come and accept the award. Abigail, great. So let me tell you a little bit about the Edward M. Kennedy Center. It has provided an amazing amount of support to ensure the success of our nursing nurse practitioner students. Their commitment to education is demonstrated in their ongoing work as preceptors. As a collective organization, they share the same dedication in providing an environment that is conducive to learning and encourages inquiry, discussion, and collaboration traits that are intertwined in the success of primary care. We are so supportive of their support for our program and our students. It is our honor to present the GSN Community Partnership Award for 2022 to the Edward M. Kennedy Center. Thank you. All right, Nancy, why don't you come up for your scholarship? So the next scholarship is the Nancy and Walter Cowell Scholarship, and this is going to recognize a DMP student that exemplifies excellent quality of care, leadership and innovation, and above all, advocacy for their patients and families. This awardee goes to Monica Mubragwa. Monica. <laughs> Mom. 
Monica is a wonderful example of the positive impact compassionate care can have on patient health and outcomes. Building upon her experiences both in LPN and in RN, she continu continues to develop her passion for nursing through her pursuit to become an adult gerontology primary care nurse practitioner. Her clinical preceptors and faculty have spoken highly of the care she has provided to both her patients in both primary care as well as palliative care. During her clinical rotations, Monica has provided care to an underserved, often health illiterate community of patients who experience high levels of mental health and opioid addiction issues, which can lead to difficult office visits. These visits can be a challenge for even the most seasoned of providers, much less a student, yet Monica maintains her empathy and learns how to provide compassionate, evidence-based care to help these patients through their crises. Through her scholarly project, she has identified the impact of social determinants of health as they pertain to one's ability to access health care. This early developing leadership role is allowing Monica to work with her clinical site and the community to implement a tool that will help identify those patients who are affected by the social determinants of health and connect them with the community resources that can help ensure that they are able to access the care that they need. We are thrilled that Monica is being recognized for her excellent care and patient advocacy with the Nancy and Walter Cowell Scholarship. Please join me in congratulating Monica. The next um, scholarship is the Sobrowski Family Scholarship, and this is to a continuing student who is committed to nursing, who's a staunch advocate for patients and families they care for, and for the ability to drive and promote and build up the community in which they serve. The awardee is Catherine Walker. Catherine, please come. Catherine exemplifies the essential attributes of nursing excellence, leadership, advocacy, and compassion. She is a dedicated nursing professional whose commitment to her patients, to her classmates, and to her community are evidenced by her work as an RN and her exemplary achievement in her family nurse practitioner program. Catherine advocates for her patients and families and for her classmates with enthusiasm and kindness. She is dedicated to caring for vulnerable populations in professional roles, and she will be a force in moving the profession forward as a genuine leader. Please join me in congratulating Catherine on this well-deserved recognition. Hi, Janet. Come on back up. <laughs> See, Janet thought she was retiring. I won't let Janet retire, so this is very special to have her here. All right, why don't you tell them about your award? So the Janet Fraser Hale oops, Humanism in Healthcare Award, established in 2016, 18, good thing I put the glasses on. <laughs> uh, by then Associate Dean and Professor, currently Professor Emeritus Dr. Jana Fraser-Hale to provide an annual award to a graduate school of nursing student or faculty member who is an exemplar of an advocate for compassionate patient care demonstrating the essence of humanism through intention, action, and eloquent reflection. And I'm delighted to announce that this award this year goes to Grace Sherborough. <laughs>
Grace's dedication to the underserved is palpably evident as she pours out her heart, soul, compassion, and concern to advocate and care for populations made vulnerable by their social determinants of health. Her assessments of patients always focus on a comprehensive approach to their life, and she reminds patients of their strengths and competencies, even in the midst of challenging life circumstances. Her preceptors and faculty provide insight into her humanism. She brings, for example, she brings a unique blend of compassionate care, clinical curiosity, along with thoughtful clinical decision making to the care of all her patients and families. She takes exquisite clinical care of patients and is a consistent and tireless advocate for the underserved towards advancing the cause of access to health care for all. Grace is always the voice of the patient and family in humanizing their experiences in health and illness and serves as a role model to her classmates, colleagues, and faculty. Congratulations, Grace. Okay, now um, it's again my honor to award a Faculty Daisy Award. Um, we just started this a few years ago. Um, and this award was created by both Bonnie and Mark Barnes of the Daisy Foundation. It recognizes and celebrates the contributions a faculty will make to the future of nursing and to sustain faculty's commitment to teaching our next generation of nurses. So it is with my sincere appreciation and pleasure that I award this to Elizabeth Beth Keaton. Let me tell you a little bit about Beth. <laughs> she also thinks she's retiring too. She's another one that is on my list. All right, Beth is being nominated for the Daisy Award recognition based on her humanistic, caring approach and expertise in teaching nursing and medical students for over 30 years in the clinical and academic setting. Beth's career at UMass Chan the Tan Ching Fen Graduate School of Nursing has greatly impacted patient care through her academic achievements, receiving high praise and recognition by all students, as you could hear right now. Fortunate, we've been fortunate to have her guidance. Beth has contributed extensively to teaching nurses through a longstanding dedicated practice in caring for women with breast cancer, including her advocacy for health equity and social justice, inspiring many nursing students and colleagues to be immersed in similar patient care for improving social determinants of health. Beth has contributed to preparing nurses and NPs for the future of nursing and profession, including enhancing the GSN curriculum in acute and community care, particularly with breast health, and in coordinating the Advanced Practice Oncology course. She has served on several committees at UMass Chan, including the Advanced Practice Nurse Practitioner Committee and the Tan Ching Fen GSN representative for several years on the Women's Faculty Committee. She just received an award from that committee as well this year. She has also educated interprofessional students in the opioid safe prescribing training immersion known as OSTI and her clinical in the clinical interprofessional curriculum known as CIPC teamwork. 
Over the years, Beth has mentored countless medical students, nursing students, and residents in breast cancer care as her primary focus for enhancing women's health. She has also presented numerous lectures on breast cancer care and women's health in the local community, regionally, and nationally. She exemplifies contributions to outstanding patient care at UMass Memorial Health and for the Worcester com community in breast cancer, including survivors and high-risk women. We recognize Beth Keating for the DAISY Award as an outstanding educator, leader, colleague, nurse practitioner, and human being. Join me. <laughs> It's now my privilege to reintroduce to you Dr. Susan Feeney, who's the director of our adult gerontology and family nurse practitioner tracks. She's going to hand out the preceptor awards, and I'm sitting down. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dean Vitello. Um, this is, um, as you know, we could not do what we do without the dedication of our preceptors. So we are very pleased to have recognized several of them. Um, so we are delighted that th some of them will actually be here. We'll be able to pass out these awards. So we have three awards we'd like to give out to the adult, to adult gerontology primary cr track um, preceptors. The first preceptor award is to Kelly Prokop. Is Kelly here? So Kelly has been a wonderful preceptor and supporter of our NP program. She has graciously worked with our students and willingly shared her time and clinical expertise during their training. We are extremely appreciative of Kelly's time and support. And I also want to take, make a point that this has been extremely uh, a great dedication during the pandemic that they have, they have gone above and beyond. So thank you, Kelly. Our next preceptor is Christy Granger. Is Christy here? <laughs> what? So Christy has been a wonderful preceptor as well, working very closely this year with Monica Mbogwa. Throughout the academic clinical year, she and her colleagues have provided a supportive and nurturing environment for our students to thrive. We're extremely appreciative of Christy's time and support. And our next preceptor, Kara Simpson. Kara here. Yay, Kara! <laughs> Kara has been a longtime supporter of our program, not only as a preceptor, but also as a dedicated clinical faculty member. She goes above and beyond the role, seeking out learning opportunities for her students while challenging them to think through patients and cases as they develop their clinical judgment and clinical thinking. We are extremely appreciative of Kara's time and support, and we couldn't be happier. So next we're we have a couple of preceptors we'd like to recognize who have been precepting in the family nurse practitioner track. The first uh, preceptor we'd like to recognize is Raleigh Pereira. Is Raleigh here? <laughs> Hailed by students. So good Hailed by students as an astute instructor and efficient clinician, Raleigh manages to impart pearls about patient care despite the pressured schedule of urgent care. His skill at teaching musculoskeletal exam has been particularly appreciated by our family practice students. So to Raleigh, we offer this award as a thank you for your willingness to always offer our students a high level, high level preceptorship and in good cheer. Thank you so much. Next is Ben Alfred. Is Ben here? I think he might be online. Ben is actually one of our alumni. 
Over the years, Ben has continued to offer his unique perspective on family and its inextricable role in addressing social determinants of health. He is an ardent champion for clinicians and patients in community health centers leading HIV care, and he has served as a champion for HIV care in our curriculum and has always been willing to take students. We hope we may continue to learn from his immense experience and gentle teaching style. So thank you, thank you, Ben. Our next preceptor we'd like to recognize is one of our pediatric NPs, which is so valuable, Telena Fairchild. Is Telena here? Nope. Uh, Telena is a provider we are proud to include in our ranks at, of willing ex experts. She's also one of our alumni. A leader in pediatric clinical education, she gladly, gladly takes on several students each semester, and a joy in clinical instruction is always noted in evaluations and comments from students. She provides our students a critical step in honing the competencies that make family providers able to care across the full lifespan. We are so immensely grateful. And um, the last... <laughs> And the next um, family nurse practitioner preceptor we'd like to recognize is Lynn Barella. Woo! Is Lynn here? Yay, Lynn! Again, Lynn is also one of our alumni. Lynn has long served as a reliable and expert clinical instructor for our family practice students in her role for caring for children and adolescents. Our learners, learners note her steadfast commi commitment to her patients and her families. Not only does she care for future generations, she continues to bring up the next generation of clinicians who will care for her community. And to Lynn, we extend heartfelt thanks. We could not do it without you. We also would like to recognize some few preceptors from the Psychiatric Mental Health and P track. The first um, preceptor is Jean Wait Knight. Is Jean here? Um, Jean has been instrumental in assisting many students in our program to gain clinical experiences in working with children with autism. She is generous with her time, flexible with our students, and is an excellent role model for everyone in both leadership and working with families. So thank you, Jean. The next two preceptors um, acknowledge they couldn't come, but we'd like to acknowledge them. Dr. Bananasi is a strong supporter of our psychiatric nurse practitioners. He offers our students many opportunities in areas including traditional treatments and more novel treatments in his community mental health practice. He champions diversity in his practice and is a mentor to many. And our next preceptor that unfortunately will not be able to be here is Deanna Fiore. Deanna is a star preceptor and has precepted several students provi providing expertise in child and adolescent mental health. Deanna's role includes interprofessional teamwork, leadership, and working with families and systems. She is highly regarded by students, and her work demonstrates the full range of what a passionate NP can accomplish. Thank you. And so, finally, we have... Um, the Adult Gerontology Acute Care in PTRAC, we'd like to recognize two um, outstanding preceptors. The first is Kasha Dotman. Is Kasha here? No. Kasha is an amazing preceptor for our acute care NPs. She consistently agrees to take our students, and our students are extremely grateful for her mentorship. She routine, routinely hears our students say, I love my rotation with Kasha. We look forward to working with her in the future. We would like to honor her um, with this acute care uh, preceptor award. Thank you, Kasha. And finally, <clears throat> we have Eric Yacuz, who's uh, a critical care uh, preceptor. Is he here? Is Eric here? <laughs> Eric. Eric is a highly skilled critical care advanced practice provider. He graciously took a student this semester and has made the clinical practicum an outstanding experience. We would like to honor Eric with this year's, um, with an outstanding preceptor award. Thank you so much, Eric. So again, 
just we can't we can't do it without the dedication of this this it's really a sacrifice it's really a, a, a paying it forward so thank you again the next thing I would like to do is invite Emily Davenport Alonzo and Ezekiel de Leon to come up they're graduating DNP students and they're going to be starting um, us in the the um, nursing white coat ceremony so may I is can um, Ezekiel and Emily. Hello, all. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, dearly beloved, we are all gathered here today to witness the union. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> That's wrong speech, right? Um, but in all seriousness, what a great honor it is to be here today with all of you at this inaugural nursing white coat ceremony. Tonight is a joyous night. We get to come together as a school and celebrate the graduating, graduating masters, DNP, and PhD students, the honorees who received an award, and the staff and faculty that have stood behind us as students. All of this, in addition to our new name as the UMass Chan Medical School Tanshin Feng Graduate School of Nursing and the transformational gift from the Chan family. Tonight, we celebrate this with a new school patch presented to our PhD students as they enter this room alongside our inaugural white coat ceremony. This ceremony has been a long fought student led journey with many champions along the way. We would be amiss if we did not, did not acknowledge these many individuals. From Stephanie D. Tommaso, a 2019 DNP graduate, to Grace Sherbel, a 2019 GSN co-president, and the 2020 and 2021 GSN eBoard and White Coat Ceremony Task Committee, including Oscar De La Rosa, Kelly Garcia, and Maddie Lane, among many others. To our supportive faculty, including Karen Dick, <coughs> excuse me, including Karen Dick, Jill Terrian, and our phenomenal dean, Dr. Vitello, and our amazing administrators, Max Quinn and Sue Collette. A sincere thank you to all of you that have made tonight possible. It is no secret that the clothes we wear can be a form of expression, symbolism, and often a reflection of the time or society at large. For this reason, as we gather here today about to don our white coats, it is, it is of significant importance that we explore the history and meaning of not only the white coat, but the clothes and forces that have led us here today. The clothes worn by nurses have greatly changed through time. In the western corner of the world, the beginning of the nursing profession as we know it is accredited to the work of Florence Nightingale. Her work in the Crimean War, her polar area diagrams, and her demonstration that educated women could impact health outcomes, a mind-blowing assertion in the 1800s. Prior to Nightingale, nursing activities, Prior to Nightingale, nursing activities were left to prisoners working off their sentence or nuns who wore their habits to tend to the sick. As the nursing profession took hold and became an activity open to the secular sect, nurses' uniforms reflected those of the sisters and gender norms at the time. These uniforms were typically ankle-length dresses with aprons for easy laundering, belts to hold instruments such as scissors, and caps to hold the nurse's hair. Interestingly, some disliked this uniform given its resemblance to that of a maid. These uniforms were often black, gray, or blue, matching the habits worn by the sisters, and later moved to white uniforms as a nursing profession championed the principles of antisepsis, cleanliness, and order, order in parallel with physicians, and practically speaking, the whitening action of bleach. <laughs> Later on, during times of war, 
capes for superheroes, of course, were added alongside caps with stripes to designate seniority and status. During World War II, US nurses were given clothes similar to that of the soldiers. Nurses, or better yet, women in general, in pants, could you believe it? Because many couldn't. Pants weren't popular or truly accepted in women's fashion until the 1960s with the wave of feminism behind it. Fast forward to the 80s where white skirts or white pantsuits were the norm on the nursing floor to today where scrubs of any color or pattern are readily available. Cue the stock photo. <laughs> <laughs> Not only have nurses' uniforms changed throughout time, so has that of our physician colleagues. Prior to the 1900s, our physician colleagues often donned the color black. During this time, an interaction with a physician was often a last-ditch effort. It is believed physicians wore black as a reflection of the seriousness and formality of this interaction, as well as the likely death that would ensue. But all of that changed with the new framework of antisepsis, the white coat following suit. This change is actually visually depicted in the American painter Thomas Eakin's two works, The Gross Clinic in 1875 to your left, named after the surgeon Dr. Gross, and The Agnew Clinic in 1889 to your right, named after the surgeon Dr. Agnew. Only a 14-year difference, yet look at the two works. The barbarism in The Gross Clinic on your left compared to the light, purity, and orderliness in The Agnew Clinic to your right. I would be amiss if I also didn't point out the presence of the anesthesia in the Agnew Clinic, certainly a game changer. And look at that, what do we have here? Let us not forget the presence of the nurse donning her white hat. From the time of the Agnew Clinic on, the white coat took on a symbol of medicine, types, scientific excellence, and physician authority. Fast forward 100 and some odd years to 1993 when the white coat took on a new meaning thanks to Dr. Arnold Gold, a clinical neurology and pediatrics professor at Columbia University. Dr. Gold, heralding the need for humanism in medicine, championed the white coat as a symbol of compassion, collaboration, and scientific excellence in healthcare. Dr. Albert Gold founded the Gold Foundation, which worked to spread this message across healthcare professions. Today, several healthcare professions don the white coat, basic scientists, nurses, nurse practitioners, and nurse practitioner students, like some of our fellow classmates, PAs, physical therapists, nutritionists, administrators, and many more. From gap year, or from our traditional BSN education to now, we have had the privilege of being steeped in the practice of nursing an act which the ANA defines as a caring-based practice in which the processes of diagnosis and treatment are applied to the human experiences of health and illness. We have had the privilege of being educated under the Tanching Fen Grad School of Nursing mission to prepare nurses who embrace diversity and promote health equity to improve the quality of life and human health in the Commonwealth and beyond by leading and innovating in education, research, healthcare delivery, and public service. The white coat, with its symbolism of humanism, collaboration, and scientific excellence, parallels our understanding of nursing and nursing science, our principles and values of nursing, and our mission as members of the UMass Chan Tanshing Fen Graduate School of Nursing. At the beginning of this deep dive into historical fashion trends, we stated, it is no secret that the clothes we wear can be a form of expression, symbolism, and often a reflection of the time or society at large. Our donning of the white coat reflects a new chapter in our history, from habits to habit-like maid uniforms entrenched in religious and gender standards, to the utility inequality of pants with pockets, to now the white coat. It offers a new symbol and tradition for us to come together as a community and revel in the meaning of nursing our values in nursing, and our identity as nurses. It offers a new symbol and tradition to reaffirm our covenant to the nursing profession and compassionate care as we continue our graduate education as nurses, leaders, scientists, and innovators. So please, fellow classmates and soon-to-be graduates, please stand with us and join us in donning your white coat. All right. 
Looking good, everyone. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Everything looks great. Um, so now we'll recite the Nightingale Pledge, and we also want to invite any nurses in the room. Um, if you'd like to join us in reciting the pledge, we encourage you to do so. Okay. I solemnly pledge myself in the presence of this assembly to practice my profession of nursing faithfully. I will provide care where care is needed and shape the environment in which care occurs so that the promise of caring may be fulfilled. I will center my practice on the welfare of all those in my care, honoring the fullness of their humanity. I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping. I will refrain from any action and will not knowingly take any action that will do harm. I will maintain and elevate the standards of my profession through reasoned inquiry and faithful scholarship. And by embodying the integrity expected of me by my peers and those I serve. Thank you. Congratulations to us all. Just a reminder that we'll be taking a group picture outside by, this, uh, by the bridge um, and that there will be some headshot opportunities in the front as well. <laughs> um, let's see. So at this moment, uh, we'd like to invite Dr. Jim Thain, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, to read the graduate names. Thank you, Ezekiel and Emily. It is my pleasure now to introduce candidates and graduates of the class of 2022. I'll ask you to stand as your name is called. There'll be several names who, uh, students who are not with us, but we'll give everyone that recognition. And I would ask that you hold all your applause till we are completed. First, candidates for the Master of Science degree. Allison Jane Dyberg. Nancy Esther Figueroa. Heidi Ann Marrier. Zoharit Memer Miller. And now candidates for the postgraduate certificate. Nina Ablowitz. Marsha Charlton. Jeffrey Villanova Coulon, Maureen Daniel, John William Donovan, Jobin Sebastian Colifin, Wendy Ann Libowitz, Patricia Ann Seeley, Scotland Sullivan Yates. Rosemary Grace Zarola and Solomon Amid Zaud. Candidates for the degree Doctor of Nursing Practice. Lynn Wee Evans Astill. Shauna Marie Baker. Melody Melissa Bonansky. Hannah Riley Bornstein, Rachel Ann Burke, Daniela Carrasco, Jeffrey Chim, Alexandra Eileen Cole, Athena Teresa Crowley, Kathleen Cudahy, Cindy Lee Cunningham, Emily Lynn Davenport Alonzo, Ezekiel De Leon, Jessica Donati, Kathleen Fishman, Rebecca 
Ann Foley. Yuki Fujida. Sabia Kamran Keza. Yen Hung Lee. Stephanie Caroline Mancini. Rachel Singer Nemchek. Fulimali Oprah Vaughn. Megan Kelly Parrott. Gretchen Elizabeth Perry. Arena Rojas. Brittany Taylor Rosenthal. Aisling Aletta Ryan. Eric Joel Sandoval. Grace Shabrell. Alyssa Marie Tonelli. Tina Vo. Candace Lorraine Wallace. And Kiana Whitney Warren. And finally, candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Rita Amoa. Zareen Barry. Amanda Corneen, Jennifer Di Benedetto, Deborah Jean Baptisti, Vin Za Malatesta, Julia Bridget Patrick. That's it. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jill Terrian as alumni director to give us final remarks. Thank you. What an incredible evening. I just have to say, hearing about all of you and everybody that's graduating, all of your accomplishments during this really challenging last few years, you've done a tremendous job. Um, a few things um, before I finish my closing remarks is that we are having a reception downstairs in the first floor of the multipurpose room. Um, and you're all welcome to, to come join us down there. Um, I just can't thank Sue Collette enough. I just want to let you know she plans this. She, she plans every event with tender loving care like it is like her family wedding. It's amazing. And then Ann Reardon and Danielle Blow, thank you so much. And there's many others that chip in, but Sue is like the ringleader, you know, and she really does a great job. Um, and then I guess you're going to have a picture on the bridge after we get out of this room, I'm guessing. Zeke and Emily? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, I just want to say um, how grateful we all are that we're able to come together tonight. Grateful that we have you entering the healthcare workforce. Many of you are already there, yes. But, you know, you're entering it in a new way. And I just have to steal from the Chancellor that we really do need you. And I look forward to his remarks on, on Sunday. And for Dean Flott, for when you talk about the science of caring and, and just all that you do, you know, in humanism and humanity to take care of your patients. And I really want to say, I think we're in really good hands. Yep, you're going to be taking care of us. I don't plan on going anytime soon, just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> just telling you. Um, but, you know, and also to the friends, family, and the different supports that you've had throughout your program, I mean, thank all the people that you are with this weekend as you celebrate, because it really is tremendous. Um, I want to congratulate all the award and scholarship winners and, you know, all the preceptors and everything that happened tonight. Um, but mostly to the graduates, to congratulate you and thank you for choosing us. We are your home, and please come back regularly. Thank you. Church is released. Here we go. So nice to see you. Oh.